Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Fam Sports New York. I'm your host, Frank Langella, joined by my co-host, Marcelio Langella. Mars, how's it going, brother? It's going well, man. Uh, a lot of news going on, and uh, it's one week till Super Bowl Sunday, which is always a, it's a national holiday for anyone that's a football fan, so it's, it uh, it's, it's going to be fun. Yes, and, uh, you know, again, with the construction going on, our schedule's kind of been thrown off a little bit. You know, there'll be some weeks that we might not be around, but want to welcome all our fans for tuning in. I know we weren't here last week. We're here this week. Uh, might be a little bit of question next week, um, but we're ready to go this week. And uh, you mentioned Super Bowl Sunday, some Giants and Jet rumors when it comes to the quarterback position, and obviously basketball going on, and we're going to talk about the basketball stuff Um in this show but again welcome all you guys for tuning in we are on youtube podcast always running as usual if you guys want to follow us at fam sports ny on twitter we also have our instagram um again facebook group wherever you want to find us you can check us out website fam sports ny.com has the shows the platforms everything you need uh merchandise articles stuff like that but i'm ready to kick it off mars uh you know because it's not football season, we don't have as much to talk about. But the NFL moves pretty quickly. Yeah. And uh, we'll stick football first. And the big news, obviously, is the quarterback carousel has been moving a little bit. First time in a, in a while that franchise quarterbacks are on the move. And one of the shoes dropped, and that was Matthew Stafford, who got traded to the Rams from Detroit uh, for a couple first, and Jared Goff, which was a pretty surprising move. And I, I think it was a good move. I know this is not really football related, but it's going to – kind of shift into into not football new york related uh, but it's going to shift to that i want to start off by just talking about that trade i think it is a great trade i think it's good on both sides but i do think the rams Got are the winners. the winners yeah and, and i'm surprised at the takes of people saying wow look how much you gave up the rams don't have a first round pick till 2024 um for matthew stafford and I, i'm just wondering i'm sitting there like you know yeah stafford is in his 30s but He's not in the upper 30s. And I believe Stafford is a better quarterback than Jared Goff. Yep. And I think Jared Goff's overrated. And we've we've spoken about this numerous times on and off camera. Jared Goff, I, I understand the wins. The team definitely got a bunch of wins. But the Rams are a loaded team. And they have a, about a two-year window to try to win the Super Bowl. And to give up a couple first and Jared Goff to get an upgrade at the quarterback spot. And they still have most of their starters coming back next year. I know they're pretty under the cap. The guys with the free agency are a little more supplemental than main pieces. I think this is a huge win for the Rams, and I think that makes them a definite contender uh, to win the division again and to compete in the NFC, especially with New Orleans being very uncertain about their quarterback situation. Now, listen, I, I, I completely agree with you. When you look at Matthew Stafford, I think it was today, uh, I mean, PFF has their own ways of grading. Um, but overall, Matthew Stafford has been kind of like that upper upper half of the league quarterback his entire career. Yeah. Um, and he was always just that quarterback that felt like if he was on any other team other than Detroit, he, you probably would see him in a lot more Pro Bowls. You probably would see him, him a lot more playoff games. And unfortunately, Detroit, as much as people, I mean, they have always ragged on Detroit, but Detroit's been one of those organizations that just kill talent, right? Look at Calvin Johnson. Yeah. Same thing happened with him. And I think him going to Los Angeles is going to be a big – first of all, I think it's a big-time trade. I think the Rams are playing for right for let's win right now. They're not playing for let's let's just keep gambling with Goff. And and now, granted, I don't think Goff is horrible, but I don't think Goff is is necessarily as good as what everyone says he is. Mm. Um, I, I, I know that me, me and you both kind of are on the same boat here about Goff and – I just think that he's a little overrated, and the money he's getting paid is way blown out of proportion. And I think this is somewhat of like a uh, NBA style trade where yeah. the, the Lions took on this horrible contract. That's why they had to get compensated with all these picks yeah. that that the Rams were just handing over to them. Um, but I agree with you. I think this is both a a win win for Detroit it and is. for the Rams because Detroit's going to be looking to rebuild in some in, in a facet and. You know they 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 weren't the worst team like they were they were better than most teams that were on the bottom tier. Um, and you're going to bring back another a decent quarterback. Sound like you're starting brand yes. new, and now you'll get more draft picks to build around. And for the Rams, you're playing in a really tough division. Yeah, right? you're you're playing against some really top tier quarterbacks. And when you, it looked like 
I mean, I'm looking at the the, the I mean, San Fran probably has the worst quarterback. Yeah, they do. They right have the now. worst quarterback right now. Even, but even last year, you're yeah. debating between Goff or Garoppolo being the worst quarterback in the division, and you needed to make some moves. And Maybe Matthew Stafford is now going to bring you up into. You know, obviously Russell Wilson's better, and now Kyler Murray yeah. is still is still better, but it's really not that no. far off at that point. And the Rams have the top defense in football. You you have a lot of things going. for Rams you. have the best defense in the division. Yep. Uh, we'll see what San Fran becomes when San Fran loses the D coordinator, right? So we'll see about San Fran. But they had the best uh, defense in the division. They had either the third or worst quarterback in the division. Now there's the argument: is he the second best quarterback in the division? Right, battling with Kyler Murray. Mm-hmm. So this is definitely a win. And on the Lions side, you get two first round picks. Okay, you have to take on a bad contract from Jared Goff, but Jared Goff is a starter level quarterback, so you're not starting from ground zero. Right? So now Detroit can be patient. Not to not really like, but they can take their time finding their next franchise quarterback if Jared Goff is not the guy yeah. with extra capital. So that again, it's a win win. I mean look, Matthew Stafford, since twenty fourteen, has has less than 13 interceptions per year, has a well above at least tw- at least plus 20 touchdowns per year, and he has at least a 62 per- completion percentage every single year, right? Yeah. And, that, and that's since 2014. And that's that's on Detroit. That's on so, Detroit that he's doing. And yeah. I'm not saying, like, wow, these are fantastic stats or anything. No. But it's a guy that's it's super reliable, Granted, he, he by all means, he's one of the toughest quarterbacks I've yes. seen. Like that's toughest something dude. that he's always on the field. And someone sometimes have questioned Jared Goff's toughness. So yep. this is a different dynamic. But leading this into New York sports, so the first shoe drop, which was Stafford, and there was even some rumors about maybe even the Jets looking at a guy like Stafford. Um, but that is done. But what it does do is it takes the Rams out of the quarterback hunting. And now Deshaun Watson is the guy who everyone's now looking to. Yep. And we have heard multiple people. I mean, we've how many people from the Texans that they don't want to trade him? Okay, but we've heard that before numerous times. We don't have to go over it when GMs say that <laughs> that he's in their plans, right? So things can definitely happen. Deshaun, though, the only way I could see that trade happen because it appears the Texans really don't want to is if he's willing to sit out, and that will push the envelope as in he needs to get traded. But there's all these rumors about where is he going to go, right? But the thing that's confused me, and we talked about this a little last week, and we're hearing more and more noise of it, is let's just talk about it from the Jets' perspective because the Giants have entered the, the conversation as well. From the Jets' perspective, how much do you give up for a guy like Deshaun Watson? And this is a conversation that I've been hearing a bunch of, about, and it, it's just confusing to me because you saw what Stafford cost. Two firsts. Right, a mid-round pick, and Jared Goff. If that's what Stafford costs at 32-33, who's a lesser of a quarterback than Deshaun, that confirms that Deshaun is going to cost at least three first-round picks. Now, there was the guy from the Texans who said a guy's going to take two first, two seconds, and two young defensive players, or two young players. Okay? If that is the price tag, Two first, two seconds, and two young players, the Jets should make a move. If they're the Texans, if that's what it's going to take for the Texans to say, this is what we're going to do. And Deshaun, there's been reports that Deshaun is going to not isolate one team as, as he's okay with. He's going to leave multiple teams that he's okay with. So it is going to leave, if it, if it becomes a, a that they're going to trade him, a bidding war. Yeah. So by all reports, it feels like it's going to be a bidding war. And if that's the price tag, the Jets should absolutely jump on it. And when you say two young players, especially defensive players, I see Quinn Williams and Franklin Myers as the two young defensive players, two defensive linemen, Houston rebuilding that defensive line, especially with J.J. Watt probably playing his last game in Houston, plus the two first, two seconds, no brainer. Yeah, I, like no as brainer, as, Jet yeah, fans. As much as I, I love Quinn Williams and how much he accelerated this year. If you only had to lose two first round picks, two seconds, and Franklin Myers and Quinn Williams, you you still have three first round picks in the next three years, right? Just think about that. And just think about d- that. You you basically are trading Jamal Adams, Franklin Myers, 
Quinn and Williams, and a, and a, and a second for Deshaun Watson. That's what you're really trading at this point. So is that if you if I said that, a lot of people would be like, yes, you're going to do that trade. As much as you're losing key members of your defense, you're gaining a star well, quarterback, a, position a star America. quarterback, and then you can now compensate for losing those defensive players. But first off, you can draft. You can yes, draft. You, you still, still have, have the draft, draft capital. Picks. You still have a lot of draft picks. And what I was what I was saying was, well, let's just say that you know, granted, that might be the standard what what people what the Texans want. But if you were the Jets and you would still give three first round picks, a second, and one player, I no, think that would be three, two, one. Yeah, well, do you think so? Two, three two, first, two, two second twos, rounders, and one young. The reason player. why I, I don't know is because you're giving up a, another first. You're giving another. There's one thing like two first, two seconds, but, but three remember, first, one second. That's and, the baseline. The two, 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 two. Right. If you're bidding against other teams, it's going to raise the price. So that's what you know. Go back to your point, but just so you, that's probably the more realistic is having three first. Mm-hmm. That's going to be the quite honest. The two 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 is a it, to me is a no brainer. Even the three first round picks, I would still do it if I'm the Jets because of the draft capital you have. And we'll get to the other team, but because of the draft capital you have, the Jets have not you personally, but the Jets have. It makes a lot of sense. You, it makes I a lot just of think sense. That the fact that you're not really losing, like I know a lot of people are saying you're draft, you're trading away your future, right? You're not. If you and have draft not. picks still, it means you're not trading away your future. You're, you're not. You're nicking this thing with Carmelo Anthony. Like no, this, that's not what you're that's doing. That's not here. what you're doing. You're not giving away the next three years of draft picks for one player. You're giving up picks that, but you still have available picks anyway. You had a stock. You had a, you a have stock assets. Pile. You have assets. You had a stockpile. Now you're going to empty the stockpile, but it's not going to be bare. It's not going to be bare empty. Yeah. Right. You still have some capital, and this is another important thing. And a lot of people have jumped in. Deshaun Watson's first year coming over to the Jets. Will not be at forty million. It's going to be around twenty, which means you can make mid twenty. You can you can get free. So you have eighty million dollars now. That still gives you the cap space to make moves. So he's not eating forty million of your cap, even with the trade. So it it just makes way too much sense for the Jets to do it. I don't understand the arguments against it, and I also don't understand this. Very smart people are saying the Jets shouldn't give up that much. For Deshaun Watson, what are we talking about? Yeah, I, I don't. Like, I don't. Did you see what Stafford was just traded for? Yeah. This is a guy who's twenty five years old, twenty five, who just signed a new deal, so you have him for years yeah. without having to rework his contract. So what are we talking about? Yeah, this no, is going to be cost major capital. Yeah, and money. I mean, like you're going to, you're going to, and getting Deshaun Watson. It just elevates your team from being a build building team to a win now team, and and not saying like oh they're, 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 if the Jets will win Super Bowl or make the playoffs. I mean, Grant, even I would I would think with Sean Watson you should be a contender for the yes. playoffs, but it's not a Super Bowl or bust season. Like you know you, you're still going to have to draft players, you're still going to have to make make Absolutely. signings, and and that comes with the whole thing. Like that first off, that should happen anyway. Like you have to first off, if let's just say the Jets don't get to Sean Watson, right? You're, in my opinion, the Jets are getting Zach Wilson. They're, that's who I think they're getting. That's what everything's pointing to, especially with the whole Sam, like, oh, I don't know. We have to do our evaluation. It tells me that he's not gung ho. As, as, as much as everyone. So they loving Sam and. No, well, and that's the point. It started, Sam. it started like when they first signed Soleil. They're like, oh, he said in that last year in that press conference that he likes Sam Darnold. But then they asked him the question, and he's like, well, we have to make evaluation. And they, whenever someone says we need to make evaluations, it, it means, means it's true. They're going to look into whether yeah. or not this guy is worth keeping instead of drafting a guy. Or if we make a move, they don't want to, you know. They or they make apparently, move. like you know, Todd Mache comes out and says, you know, Sam is slightly worse than Deshaun Watson. Right, yeah. I mean, granted, I haven't seen it, but let's just say that Slay and them do their work and they and they think the same thing, which I'd be surprised on. But that's the point. They're, they're going to evaluate. Is- and see whether or not Sam is worth keeping, or should they go full on to Sean Watson, or should they just if they don't get to Sean, we're going to get Zach Wilson, and they just build through the draft. I got it. I got it. Anybody who evaluates these last three years and says, "Well, Deshaun's only a, a tick above Sam," really makes me question their evaluation process. Yeah, Sam might have untapped potential. Okay? Yeah, he, he probably does. He probably does, but not. Not top five. But let's be 
anyone who watched 2019, anybody who watched this past season and comes with that conclusion, that's insanity. Insanity. One, put up, I think it was, you know, 100 passer rate, right? Which made him number two in the league behind Mahomes. The other was the last in passer rate. Last. Yeah. So how could you come with this and, conclusion? And, and people's arguments is that, well, look at the Texans. They, they're the third pick in the draft. Jets are second. Yeah, but Deshaun Watson's stats didn't crumble. Like, he had seven, near 70% completion percentage yeah. through our whole year on one of the worst teams in football. Yeah, and, I, and they're going to say, well, you know, Texans have more what I Listen, do the Texans offensively, do they have better wide receivers? Yes. Have you looked at the offensive line? Texans' offensive line was horrifying. And Jet fans watching the Jets' defense was bad, right? Yeah. Jets' defense was bad. The Texans were worse. They were worse defensively. So imagine what you watched each week on the Jets. Imagine a worse defense. Yep. Imagine a worse defense. So do, do you want to talk about pressure? Deshaun had all the pressure in the world, okay? So, listen, it, it's absolutely worth it for the Jet fans. And the last point, Mark, before we go to the next team, the other New York team, if you don't get him, and the Dolphins do. What a change to the division. Yes. Because if you get it and you steal them from Miami, if Miami's a contender, because there's other teams, Carolina, I'm sure San Fran is going to get involved. If you take them from Miami, you arguably, and I don't think it's a big argument, even though great year Josh Allen, you arguably have the best quarterback in the division. Miami has uncertainty at quarterback. New England has uncertainty at quarterback. You might have the best quarterback in the division. And I think you do have the best quarterback if you get Deshaun Watson. Yes. Right? So you went from likely being the third or fourth worst quarterback to being the best in your division. So, like, that's the big thing. I know. That's the the whole point. Go ahead. If Miami gets him, now Miami with their team has the best quarterback in the division, probably the best defense in the division, and then, oh, yeah, Buffalo – who just battled for this season, winning the division, looked like a, a well-oiled machine, and you know they're going to be around with that coaching staff, bring back Dybul. Yep. So now you have to deal with both those teams, and you don't know what New England's going to do, but New England still won seven games. You clearly are the worst, like, yeah, that, that, you're that, the, clearly that the worst team. Day, and, and, and like you said, these are young guys. They're not leaving, right? And that's why that's what my whole point is. If, if this is... Now, granted, Houston could just be bloviating this, the Absolutely. amount of price tag, and they, they should. At the end of the day, not, at the end of the day, but you have to, they're going to have to counterweigh it to whether Deshaun is, is not going to play or not. I think that's the first thing that's going to happen. That's what this whole time period is of, you know, we're not time. trading him. Yeah, no, no, that's trade him. But, but they this, do. This I think the time where things will pick up is draft time. So April, I believe, is going to be a big moment. Yes. Because if you're going to make the trade, you want to do it to garner the draft capital. Yeah, you want to do you want to do your evaluations yeah. of the players and say, all right, should we make this move? And I completely agree. I think, I think you'll find out in the next two months Absolutely. what's going to happen. Absolutely. And and I don't think I don't think that Deshaun is going to be in, in Houston. I think it's one of these teams is going to make a move. Now, granted, I hope I hope it's the Jets. Yeah, but if it's not the Jets, I hope it's anyone but Miami. Yes, like no, I, I, I hope it's I hope it's San Fran. And Washington. I hope it's yeah. I hope it's. I hope. I honestly. I hope it's the Panthers. Like, I go do it. Do not allow Miami. I listen. I'm because my boy is, and I'm just gonna look around and say Miami literally has your picks, Houston. They they don't have better capital than the other other teams. They just have your capital, but they have the closest to the Jets. That's the point. Because I get it. Miami has. But you're getting your picks back. That's all you're getting. For yeah, they're gonna get more. On your first round, you're correct, but they will get more. The the point. the point is, if he doesn't go to the Jets, you really don't want to see him in the AFC. As no. a Giant fan, I do not want him anywhere near Washington um, for any type of deal. So you can go to San Fran, Carolina, whatever. But a damn sure, don't be in the AFC East and don't be in the NFC East. That we don't want. Speaking of the Giants, multiple people brought up the Giants. Dan Orlowski, Chris Carlin on, the, on uh, ESPN Radio says, why don't the Giants get involved in this Deshaun Watson sweepstakes. And I don't think it's crazy talk. I really don't think. There should be 20-something teams calling for Deshaun Watson if he becomes available because guess what? 
He's a top eight quarterback, arguably top five. So if you don't have a top five quarterback, he's an upgrade. Yeah. So I don't think it's crazy, but people were throwing out ideas on what the Giants should do. And some of the ideas weren't that wacky. I understand the Giants are in a different situation. They don't have the capital that some of these other teams have. But I'll be honest with you. (laughs) If you told me two firsts, two seconds, and Daniel Jones and Saquon Barkley, I really would consider it. I Listen, I get it. I get it. The Giants don't have the kind of capital. They really don't. It will hurt them. Both financially, they're not in the same cap space as the Jets. And draft pick-wise, they're not in the same draft capital. But Deshaun Watson is clearly better than Daniel Jones. Clearly. And I love me some Saquon Barkley. I think he's one of the best backs when he plays. And he's been behind a garbage offensive line. But if you're giving up a running back to to get Deshaun Watson... I think the combination of Daniel Jones and Saquon Barkley do not meet Deshaun Watson. I don't. I don't believe that's the case. Yeah. I don't believe that's the case. Now, if you're talking all oh, three firsts, both of those guys, multiple seconds, oh, you know, like there's only so much. The Giants won't have a team. Like we can't yeah, even I, put out uh, a team. What makes me laugh? I think I saw some Giants Giants fans are saying, "Let's give Peppers, let's give Dalvin Tomlinson." No, 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 sorry, not Donald Thompson. Lorenzo Carter and Daniel Jones with picks, and they'll take the deal. I'm sorry, but that I don't think like, that's not going to happen. What I would think would Dalvin Tomlinson, not Lorenzo Carter, Dalvin Thompson, Jabril Peppers, and three first. I, right? I, I would say Dalvin Or the 2 2 or the 2 2 2. I would say if you're saying the 2 2 2 rule, two first, two second, Dalvin and Jabril. They meet the criteria of both young defensive guys. But again, Dalvin is a free I would, agent. I would, would no, I wouldn't say Dalvin. I would say it would have to be Dexter Lawrence. It would have to be Daniel Jones, Peppers, and then the 2-2. That's what that would be. I, I, I mean, Daniel, I don't think they take... Because Julius, Julius... If they take Daniel Jones, it won't be two defenders. Because that means they like Daniel Jones. They're going to give him a shot. You would have to trade Daniel Jones to another party the, the, the to only get a draft cap why I say that is because... Peppers is going to have to rework a deal. Well, he has one more year left, so yeah, they pick the up point. his fifth it's, it's not it, The reason why they want young guys is because they want to do that. They want yes. to bring out rookie contracts. That's why Daniel Jones is on his rookie deal. Yes, but they, well, Lawrence, if they get Dexter, they they would have uh, Dexter Lawrence. Is Dexter Lawrence? Yeah, I, I don't think you're going to get both because if you get Daniel Jones, there's no way the Giants could say I'm giving Peppers and Lawrence. I don't think that happens. I think Daniel Jones is going to take one of those two people slots. Because he is a first-round quarterback, right? And you're going to have him for another three years if you want him, right? So I don't know what it is, but the point, bottom line is, Mars, are the Giants, like when people say the Giants should get involved, I don't think that's a crazy no, thing at all. They should call. They should absolutely call. Now, what is too much? We just said it. But if you're telling me like 2-2-2 two, 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 and two of those players were Daniel Jones and Saquon Barkley, you have to consider You definitely have to if, consider if this it. Was, if this was the year when Gettleman traded – OBJ, I would say the Giants would be having the advantage, but they, but unfortunately, like you said, they don't have the assets anymore. This is not that year, no. Right? They, and and they also, I just think for Giants future wise, um, it wouldn't be as smart. I mean, granted, I think Deshaun Watson would elevate your team, but you're you would be like the Knicks. You lose your future of drafting for two of, years, and it's the years. first two picks. If you trust your scouting department, listen, the Rams. Haven't had a first round pick since Jared Goff. They somehow built their team. Okay, it's it, it's not undoable. And the salary cap, again, smart teams are able to work the salary cap. At the end of the day, they have to pay the piper. Like the Saints are about to pay the piper. The Philadelphia Eagles are about to pay the piper. But for years, Mars, for years, they've conned that salary cap and drawn up good teams. Now they have to pay, but it's years down the line. The Giants could do the same thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll pay for it years down the line, but we'll p- put out the competitive team when we have Watson. So, like, well, it's not crazy. And I know Giant fans don't like it because finally it feels like we were got out of the Jerry Reese salary cap hell and the draft pick hell. But, you know, I mean, this is just how many, but at the end yeah, of the day, how many opportunities does a yeah, guy I mean, like Sean Watson day, become this available? Is, this is the top. This is a top five quarterback in football. And the reason why I'm just saying that for the Giants' sake is because I think the Giants are just. A few key guys away from winning the division. 
right? And the reason why I'd be a little nervous about giving away a lot of their assets is because now you have to kind of fill fill in the blanks. Yeah. And and you're not having draft picks there makes it more difficult. Now, yeah. granted, to you lose Daniel Jones and, and let's just say Dexter Lawrence and, and whatever, you lose those two, you get to Sean Watson, right? Your quarterback play with a healthy Saquon might make things a lot more interesting yes. offensively. Um, unfortunately, you're still going to have Jason Garrett, right? So it, it's really, you know, it, it, you still have receivers, and that's the point. Like you, that, those draft picks you gave up would be used well, first round for yeah. definitely a receiver. So now, now, granted, Deshaun, uh, I'm looking comparatively at the Giants receiving court to the Texans. Giants receiving court is probably better than the Texans, um, but I just, I just think that for the Giants' future, I wouldn't like it. But obviously, if they didn't, I wouldn't be here bashing them. For no. It. I think every team should call. And then, every team should yeah. call and find out. Outside and of then, like six or seven teams. Yeah, I mean, and at the call. end of the day, like the reason why I'm just keep harping about the Jets is because the Jets don't know whether he Sam Darnold is the guy, right? Daniel Jones, I know he. This is his year to prove himself. Yeah, this is like, he's like the where Sam was this past yeah, season. Absolutely, but Sam didn't prove himself. That's the point, that, and, and that's, that's why I'm yeah. saying the Jets. Yes, but that, that's the point. If the Jets don't get him, they're still going to draft the quarterback. In my opinion, I think they're going to get Zach Wilson. And I know, and me, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be mad at him. For I it. mean, you argue about it. I don't think it's the wrong choice either. I, I really don't. And if they, and I wouldn't, but I wouldn't be surprised if Sam comes back either. And they, they, I, I wouldn't be surprised, but I am thinking it's Zach Wilson. I, but I, if the Jets surprisingly get Deshaun Watson this trade, I'd be ecstatic. I like I wouldn't be sitting Jeff here as one of the Jets fans that are just like I, I saw a Jets fan that said, you know, I've been a fan since '67. And if they do this deal, I'm done. Like acting like it's this insane. is the that final it's straw insane. that broke. Like you know, like I've been watching the Jets my entire life, and there have been plenty of times and, where I said to myself, "This, I how many how many fan?" And then this poor this moment is not the is time the where I'm feeling that. This is the opposite. And, say, you know, and I'm going to say this as a Giant fan. I know Giant fans don't hear it. If the Giants were to do it and gave up a Daniel Jones, Saquon Barkley for Deshaun Watson, I wouldn't be against it. And if you just said if they're going to give up Daniel Jones and Dexter Lawrence. That'd be even better. That's even better, right? So listen, I like those players too. I really Dexter Lawrence is an underrated defensive line. So people bag on him like, oh, he's just a run stuffer. They don't watch football. Like he's a good defensive line. Mm-hmm. Okay, Daniel Jones obviously has a lot to prove this upcoming year. So like, first of all, I just want to say that Giants are not getting Deshaun Watson. No, they aren't. Okay, but the 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 idea that they should not be involved in and some of the names that were being thrown out there, they absolutely should be. Absolutely. I'm sorry. There is what loyalty do I have to these giant players? I like them. I really do, but they have none of them have resulted in winning. No. None of them. Nope. So like my loyalty to them is not as crazed as, as some people are saying. Um but th- that's here or there. Another player on the Texans that's probably going got one year left, JJ Watt. And I know uh one of the guys who does the draft, Miller, right? He was a uh, I believe it was Bleacher Report, but I could be wrong. But Mike Miller uh, had the Giants as a good destination for Watt. And usually Miller's wrong about 98% of the time. I don't think he's wrong on this one. I think Watt makes sense for the Giants. Yeah. Depending on what the cost is. Now, if for some reason the Giant, the, the Texans release him, no doubt they should oh, go. They should be the first one. But trade-wise, depending on what the capital is, doesn't it, – it, listen, I know he's over the hill. But you get him for one year – Okay. Well, what pack do you think we? Because like, it would they, be a mid round. That I know it, it's it a, a mid round, but it's just like it's so difficult to to, to comparatively is. look at what's the compensation for a guy like JJ Watt who's at the tail end of his career, yes. who's still playing at a top level. Like he's not like he's no, play, he's not the same. But you know, I tell you what, what, he's still playing at. He's a very if you compare disruptor. it to what the Giants edge rushers are. Oh yeah, but I'm and but even inside. One, this is a guy who moves inside too. And you don't know if the Giants can both re-sign Leonard Williams or Dalvin Tomlinson. Now, I believe they will re-sign at least one of them. And you, I think you, it's going to be Leonard yeah, Williams. That, like if so Tomlinson, you, make Leonard Williams you don't know if you... Tomlinson is going to be there. So mm-hmm. this would be a guy who replaces him. Um, and a guy that I still think has something left. I would trade on um, a little shakier on for a trade. But if they release him, definitely makes sense. For the Giants to go after him, I don't think he's going to be as high priced because of where he is at his career as some of these other edge rushers that are going to be priced out of the Giants market. Mm-hmm. Right, the Giants are going to have to go a little bit bargain hop, hopping um, on. They can't get a wide receiver and an edge guy, right? One of them could be expensive, 
they both can't be expensive. They don't have that. Yeah. So they're going to have to look for the middle, you know, cheaper options. Um, and I don't know how much Watt's going to get on the market, but I that that makes a lot of sense to me given his versatility on the defensive line. Wars. No, I listen. Getting JJ Watt to be on your team. Yeah, he's also tremendous. I mean, he's a great leader. Oh, great team. That, that's like, the point. He he would elevate the Giants' defensive line, and they are already pretty good. Um, in the middle. In the middle. Yeah. Um, and if you get him, it's only going to help. I mean, him, Dalvin Thompson, he is better than Dalvin Thompson, in my opinion. Um, and I think that that'd be a very good prize to get as a, as a possible free agent or, you know, depending, like you said, on, on a trade value. But um, that, I think that'd be big for the Giants. And I definitely would be looking into it. And I just think for the Giants' sake, if I was Gettleman, I don't think the Giants are going to get Watson. But if you were to get Watt for like a – a third round pick or a second round pick? I wouldn't do second, but third or later, a third, a third I would never consider. I would do it, and then you could still you still can draft a wide receiver, and then I mean we'll we'll go more closer to the draft yeah. needs and stuff. But I think that you, you, the Giants are close enough that they could make a playoff run, especially with the Eagles imploding from within, and they're they were right there with. I mean, they beat Washington twice. Yeah, and they, you know, they beat they and beat the, Dallas when they needed to. And the to. big thing would be Washington not getting a Deshaun Watson. Yes. They, they missed out on the Stafford, even though they were involved with Stafford. Yep. Thank goodness. If yeah, if, if they Washington don't get Watson, get a quarterback. Washington has a big question at quarterback. Yep. If they don't get a quarterback, then it's really, in my opinion, I think it's going to be Dallas and Giants battling it out. But Washington's defense is good. It's just really going to be whether they get any offensive. Yeah, like quarterback. Yeah, quarterback. It's really quarterback really. is a huge, but, that, but that's that, the biggest the whole point is that the <laughs> Giants are close enough that if Daniel Jones has any better year he has than been. last year, he's got it. And Saquon plays actually he more has. than two games, and the offense line just st- played the same way. Defense played the same way. The Giants will win the division, in my opinion. If, if that's right, the man. things I'm saying here, let's move to basketball, and we go now to the Nets, Mars. And their big three, I mean, you know, I know they're playing Washington right as we speak. I'm not sure what the final the score is. But they've won four straight. They've been, you know, 13-8. and eight. They're second in the East, 8-2 and two in their last 10 games. Um, obviously, with the, the addition of James Harden, they're really figuring things out. The question I want to impose, do you believe that they are the favorite out of the East? And what are their favorite, you know, do you think they have enough to beat a team like the Lakers or the Clippers? And, uh, you know, I just want to start off with they definitely look like they're figuring out offensively. We, we've talked about this before, and mm. it's just coming into fruition. Offensively, they're just too explosive offensively. They will put up points, and they can beat you multiple ways. You want to, you want to play shooting? We could shoot. You want us to drive into the, to the hoop? We got dudes who can drive. You want to play iso ball? Well, you, they clearly have an iso squad, okay? The question is going to be the dirty work, Right? The dirty work, what I mean, is rebounding and defending. Now, there is some flaws on the way the Nets are set up, and they're obviously going to try to make moves at the deadline to try to sure up some of those things. Rebounding is a huge one. They are not very big or athletic because they got rid of a guy like Allen um, in the forward and center spot. Yeah. I mean, Jordan, he's watched. DeAndre Jordan, the reason he's on the squad, I know he's playing well tonight. He's friends. But he's, like friends he's, like, he's not a starting center. No. He really isn't. I, I, losing losing Allen, right, is was was a big loss. Then and they had to. Like, yeah, you had to get rid of your asset. Yeah. You had to give up. And I agree with you. I mean, they're right now they're winning by by seven with with eight minutes twenty one seconds left in the fourth. But um, yet yeah, no, offensively they're just unstoppable. It looks like. I mean, they're, they're racking out points and they, just, yeah. they can get you from anywhere. And and I agree with you. But when it comes to what I think, who they compare against, they'll easily be the winner. I think in the East. I I mean. I say easily. I think they're their favorite to easily win, but it's really going to come down to them or Boston. Or Boston um, will be the in the and final. Philadelphia. I, I, there are teams, but I do. I think they, they are just, the they are the, the one the most favorite the highest East. odds of winning. I think East. they're the favorite in the East. When it comes to pl- beating the Lakers, but the Lakers are just such a, a force right now, and the reason why I don't know if they could is because. We have to see based on health wise where, where they are because that was the biggest question about them whether they can last the entire season and secondly who's stopping Davis that's who's that stopping Anthony the, Davis that's I mean, the biggest I think they match up better with the Clippers if I'm the Nets and I make it to the finals that's a team I'd rather yes. see but I I don't know who they're gonna put up against Davis okay even LeBron 
Durant's a good defender. Hey, but I think LeBron doesn't play defense either. So it's going to be those yeah, two guys. But he can when he wants to. But the problem is, who's going to guard LeBron? You could put Durant, but do you want Durant to have the, the you know, the, the assignment to play LeBron a full game? I don't know if you really want that. Now, you got, like I mentioned, you have Brown, you know, guard playing defense. Mm-hmm. The bench has been wiped a little bit clean, especially with Dinwiddie not being there, right? So the, the bench is an issue. Joe Harris, they have some three-point. They obviously have threat at three-point range. But Harris is not a good rebounder, and he's not a good defender. Like, he's not terrible, but he's not that good either. So you have a Brown who's trying to play be that defensive stopper, okay? And we mentioned center. A couple things they got to look at. If you got a guy like Andre Drummond, which they were talking about buying him out at Cleveland, that makes, if you're a Nets fan, that's that's the move you want to make. Drummond's not that special, but I tell you what, he can block shots, he can rebound. You know he can do that, mm-hmm. okay? That's a guy who can help clean up some of that ugly rebounding issues in the starting unit. They also got to find someone who can guard the two and the three consistently um, on the defensive end. Brown's solid, but you need – Brown's more – if he was a bench guy doing that, like in the second unit being the defensive stopper, I'd feel more comfortable. They need to get somebody who can really do that. And, uh, you know, they're talking about J.J. Redick wants to get traded to – and it'll bring more firepower, but that's not going to help you defensively and do the dirty, you know, the yeah, no. nitty-gritty things. So, yeah, that will definitely make your three-point shooting better. You need, and he'll probably go into the second unit, which will help the bench, which is not that good. But rebounding and defense, Durant can play good defense. Harden can play defense when he wants to. Kyrie's not that good defensively, and I don't fully buy Harden's defense. Um, Brown can play defensively, but again, we went over this. It's just that you need a little bit more. Like, if you look at the Lakers, Lakers got a bunch of dudes who can play defense because they, they either play defense and shoot threes because they have guys in LeBron and Anthony Davis that carry the load, get everyone the ball, score when they want to. Yep. And then you guys, you know, you got Caldwell Pope who can hit threes and play defense, right? You got Harold's not really a defender, but, you know, you got guys who can do the dirty work for guys like Anthony Davis and LeBron that I don't feel the Nets have at the moment. And that's who they need to get to really, if they want to compete against a Lakers team, that's what they're going to need. And especially, like you said, someone who could at least make Anthony Davis' life a little miserable. Yeah. And that, like you said, you kind of nailed all the points. At the end of the day, they don't have those guys that are going to just get in your face defensively. You need, especially against LeBron, if you look at previous previous times he lost in the championship, it's always because he starts to get rattled. He starts getting a guy that's going to, like, even... He'll never shut him down, no, but, he never, like, but he you, multiple guys. Like, even when, when they played against the Warriors, you know, Iguodala is that guy that's not a scorer, but he he shut down LeBron to the point where... Not, not shut, down, shut down completely, but shut him down where he, he didn't feel comfortable. That's and that thing. was all you really needed to do to get him rattled. Now you have a guy like Anthony Davis who's just a force. Right, he is a, and I said we, we talked about this off camera. It's like having two unicorns on one team. Yeah. You have LeBron and Anthony Davis, who are humongous human beings, but can move like more yeah. agile players, and they can do it all. They can score. They're very good at passing, and Anthony Davis still has that top defensive player yeah. talent. And LeBron, like you said, when he wants to play defense, he can. He can. Um, now, granted, he has less of that nowadays, but. He still can do it, yeah. right? I think any team would take LeBron on their, on their <laughs> squad, um, and that's the point. I, I think the Nets, like scoring ability, is like, is I mean, off I, the chart. yeah, off the charts. I mean, even this game, fifty eight percent field goals. You know, uh, the three pointers are fifty three percent. But again, the Wizards you know, are like, they're naked, they're like they're right now the they're close. keeping the game close. It's like four four, yeah, four that, points and away. And Washington's like the worst worst team in the league. So, yeah. like you know, it, it's just it should they need. They need more help, role playing help. Yes, they they do, and that's that's kind of you know I, I would get as many defensive stoppers as you can get. Drummond's a great start. Redick to help your bench. I uh, I get it. I would ask the Knicks. You know, like what if we gave you just some second rounder um, from from twenty fifty five for Frank Nielakina, <laughs> right? I mean, you might as well. Hey, listen, Knicks. You might as well. Knowing how much the Knicks. Brass doesn't like Frank. Give him a bag of chips, and I'm I saying think. we'll give you. Give, a second. A, give us a, some Doritos. Give, give us red hot Doritos, and then give, give us a second round pick for year 2055. Like, who knows when we have rights to it? And I, uh, you know, get it done. I mean, it'll be a win win for both. The Knicks will get a, a draft capital, 
Uh, clearly, they don't want Frank, and they don't value him at all. Yep. And the Nets will get added defense on the on you know in the second unit or in the first unit to try to guard twos or ones. You know, we'll see what you know. Why not? Why not? I mean, they, this is a, this is it. Get get defensive stoppers. You don't need anyone to score. No, nope. you got the scores. Okay. Can you just hit once in a while when you're open? They pass it to you. That's all. Can you hit your free throws? And can you play defense and rebound? That's what the Nets are needing, right? They don't need no scores. We don't need you to be an ISO guy. We don't need you to put up 20. They got all that covered. So that's what I believe the Nets should do. Going to the Knicks, Mars, they lost today to the Clippers. They're 9-12, and 12, ninth in the East. But, again, the Clippers are the hottest team probably in the league right now. Yeah. Um, and teams that can score the way the Clippers can score, the, the Knicks just don't have enough. They don't. They need to play great defense to win games. You hear Clyde say it all the time, you know, play D for the for the W um, because offensively they're just not good enough they, and they don't shoot well enough um, to, to keep up with teams like that. And so, but I will say this. The Knicks are developing a little bit of a big three, not to the level, obviously. No. But, like, they had their own little miniature big three, and that is Randall, uh, RJ, and IQ. Um. And they performed again today. And I got to start. Obviously, we gave a bunch of praises Randall last time. He deserves to be an All Star this year, right? I think yeah. we both agree. Yeah, I, I he definitely agree. should be an All Star. I think it'd be a crime not to have him as an All Star. I know it's a little crowded, but I tell you, he's putting up twenty two and eleven with assists efficiently. I mean, he's shooting eighty percent on his free throw, career high by by ten points. <laughs> okay, so like he's having, he is the the engine for this team yes so he deserves to be an all-star um but rj Barrett, okay not too long ago people were number one calling rj a bust i know his shooting was bad but they were calling rj a bust even saying that he should go down to the g league (laughs) i mean it's so foolish when we heard it rj Barrett deserves a boatload of credit he looks fantastic yes he is efficient Okay, he's not playing without like outside of himself. He's not becoming a. He was bombing threes, you know, not too long ago, like trying to trying to become a three point marksman. That's not who he is. That's not who he is. They give him the ball in his hands. They make him run the offense a little bit, and he drives and he takes the shots that that are easy for him. And when he's in rhythm, he'll shoot threes. Yes, and he's been hitting them. But he's playing within himself, and he's also making plays. And this is what we saw at Duke, and it drove me crazy last year. When Randall was like trying to be the point forward and and RJ would be like a, become a jump shooter, that's not who he is. He no. was the guy who would hold the ball, right? And he still had Zion. Zion controlled the pace. He controlled the pace. Why can't you do that with the Knicks? And we're seeing it this year. Randall's becoming our Zion from Duke, and RJ's becoming RJ. Yeah, and it's making He's... our lack of terrible point guard play not as bad, even though it rears its, it's ugly still, head. Yeah, it's still listen and. There's a lot of things you can go with the Knicks. Um, me and you can have a whole show just yeah. on Knicks hatred and dumb things they do. But R.J. Barrett, the hate that he had gotten, so just so far in his career, first off, he's extremely still, he's super young, 20, 20, right? And and the fact that they were calling him a bust after one season, in the reality, I know people don't like to admit it, but R.J. Barrett should have been on the All Rookie Team. Yes, like let's be real, everybody. Let's be real. As much as he, the Knicks stink, you can't put that on R.J. Barrett that the Knicks, Knicks organization stinks, right? It's not like R.J. Barrett is the only reason why the Knicks didn't win games. We we have a lot of reasons why we didn't win games. Like, and, and R.J. was like the only bright thing that was going on with the Knicks. So when you look at stats across the league, R.J. was right there. He should have been yeah, on the rugby all rookie team. It was all about but that's thing. one thing. Yeah, and then but they then, were talking about his efficiency. Yeah, and then they bring in this season. So it's like, wow, man, remember the Knicks drafted R.J.? R.J. Is, is killing it right now. And and I, I want people to I, – I wish I could have like a list of every person that ever said that so then I can call them out because you sound dumb. We Everyone, everyone knew that – R.J. Barrett was not Zion or John Moran. We knew. We knew. When they drafted him, we said there's a clear differential And that's why I heard when we got the third pick. Yes. There was a clear change between 1-2 and then 3. Uh, sorry, 1-2 and everybody else. Yeah. We all knew this going forward. I, I know people are going to BS and say, well, you know, I don't know. There's some guys that after 3 that might be on the same level. Don't fool yourself. 
there is a clear difference, and we knew this. We knew that RJ might not come out the first year just like Zion or John Moran be on the playoff contending teams. But then the year after, he could show up. And that's what's happening right now. Now, granted, there are some things he can prove on. Absolutely. But he is definitely head and shoulders different than he was last year in improving more and more. Yeah. Now, let's talk about the next one. You said the third man uh, on the on the power yeah, trip. Quickly. Quickly. Yeah. Quickly is not even starting. And he is averaging on the same par as the other top guards, rookie guards, of Absolutely. the NBA. Yeah. Right, and he has less minutes than they do. Yeah. So, firstly, and it, it's like a we should just name the show quickly should start. Like that's what we should just yeah, name our show I, because I'm every week I, I'm we come up, out bro. and we say I'm IQ we, should start over Alpha Payton. But I don't want to say like it's not an I told you so. I said this in the preseason, yes. right before the yeah, season we, we, started. Yeah, we were saying that we start <laughs> IQ, okay? But I've given up, Mars. I've given up on that that adventure. Whatever, you know what? IQ's playing well. Don't change the formula, right? As long as he plays more minutes than Peyton, that's number one. Should easily, because any doubt, any night that quickly he's not hurt, I don't care if he's shooting 20%, he should be playing more minutes than Peyton. I don't care about anything else. Okay, if you don't want him to start, fine. Have that. Have your BS starting lineup. Okay. But I am going to say this. At what point, and you know, Payton actually offensively today wasn't that bad. Okay. He was three of seven. Okay. He only took two threes. He hit one of them, I believe. Okay. He had 10 points. Offensively, he wasn't that bad. But Jackson was cooking him, mm-hmm. Reggie Jackson, on defense. Again, what he, he's the most defensively, he's so overrated on defense, which just makes me, it, it almost, they're like trying to question. Question my intelligence. Yeah, I, when they constantly, well, you know, he's out there because of his very good defense and his intangibles. And we heard it today, today too, on the broadcast. You know, we hear Tom Thibodeau talk about it. You know, all the things that Peyton brings to the table. And I don't want to dive too much into Peyton because it gives me anxiety. Okay, but it is a question of my you know, like you're questioning my intelligence yeah. by doing this. Okay, I know what I'm watching. All right. Payton, at what point does guys like Payton, do you reduce their minutes and give other people chances? Or give people who are getting minutes even more minutes? At what point? At what point? That's the only thing I'm going to say on that. Because guys, he's not the only one. Guys like Bullock, and I know he was solid today. But over the long stretch, Bullock has been bad. He's been bad. And he's another guy. He's in there for his defense. Okay. As long as you're playing good defense... But don't lie to me. Don't lie to me. Don't play bad defense and tell me it's good defense. Because that's what we're seeing. Don't give me bad defense and say it's good. Yeah. As a unit, they are our top 10 defense. And Thibodeau deserves a lot of credit. Okay? The Knicks are 9-12. and 12. He's elevated the talent, especially on the defensive end. He has. The knock I have on Thibs is number one. He clearly gives a different leash. To oh, veterans compared sure. to young players. That is, that is guaranteed. That's a guarantee. Okay? So it's not the same leash. And number two, his rotations suck. I, it sucks. I, I, don't, I don't understand because it feels like every Knicks coach that comes in, their rotations are horrible. Yeah. Every Knicks coach we have. I mean, today, it was a close game for th- all the way through three quarters. Okay? In the fourth quarter, he waited three minutes too long to put the starters plus quickly in. Austin Rivers was bad today. He was bad. Okay, Burks didn't give you that much. I mean, you got Taj Gibson out there. I, I you know, I, like they not they didn't give you anything. And he he kept him out there because that was Quickly's unit. Quickly was playing well. Yes. So why didn't you put the starters and Quickly in? He waited three minutes too long to the point where Clippers go up by ten, and by that point it's too late. It, it and we've seen this. This is becoming a trend. Where sometimes he leaves Payne out too long. Sometimes he leaves the, the second unit out too Dude, long. I, I want to see it and I wanna see a next game where Peyton is just the leader of the second unit. I he it's been what we have 20, 21 games played. Right? Yeah. Twenty one games played. Give quickly, and I'll say it into the microphone. Give quickly the start. He has not started one game. Not one. We are not 
a winning right. team right now. Change it up. Give quickly the start, and let's see what happens. If you give him more points, by mathematician, I'm not some mathematician, but by looking at his minutes being less than all those other players and still being less than Peyton, and he scores more than Peyton, you would think with more minutes yeah, he scores more. But, 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 you know, this is what the mindset, in my opinion, that they're trying to do. Okay, Randall and RJ control the offense. So if they put a guy like Quickly who, in the second unit, he's really controlling the offense. Okay? He's running the offense in the second unit. Do you take the ball out of his hands and give it more to Randall and RJ, or do you get Quickly more in his hands and take it out of RJ's hands? So I understand that dynamic. Again, if you want to do this start versus not start, I've given up on it, Mars. I've given up. But I'm going to tell you what. Peyton is coming to the point where... Where do you give you like? Why is he part of the, even the rotation? And today was one of his better games, which is saying a lot, shooting forty three percent. Okay, but defensively he was bad. And then every other game, it's well his defense is okay, but offensively he's horrifying. And then there's even games where he's just unplayable. What at what point do you say you know what? Maybe we need to give somebody else a chance. Like today, right? Bullet comes back, Burks, Kevin Knox to the bench, and I'm almost at the point where I don't really care. Because Kevin Knox, you know, when Kevin Knox is not involved shooting the ball, he does nothing. Like he really does nothing. I, not, like if he doesn't hit awesome. a couple, if Knox. he doesn't hit a couple threes, he really does nothing. So Knox is not the one that bothers me so much. Obviously, I'm going to bring up Frank because I think Frank is actually a good three corner three point shooter. I know overall three, he's really not good in pull up. No, right? But catch and shoot, especially in the corners, which is what Dibs wants to do, and defensively. I'm sorry. I need to go to a practice and see how bad Frank is because it makes no. When I watch actually game tape, I don't see where this horrifying player and can't find any minutes is at. But Peyton, who could put up stinker after stinker, gets 20 plus minutes. I don't know. Bullock, the same thing. 20 plus minutes, and most of the time, not today, because Nick fans gonna go like, "Well, did you see Bullock today?" Most of the time, all right? When we come back down to earth, every once in a while they do this. Bullock puts up stinkers. And he gets hurt. Bullock also gets hurt. Okay? He missed three games before he came back. It would have sore neck. So it's not like, you know, like, Bullock gets... Frank yeah. gets hurt. He gets wiped out of the rotation. Bullock gets hurt. He's right? He gets you right back in, in the yeah, starting lineup. right back in. Okay? So let's just... Let's stop pretending about, like, you know, everyone's earning their keep here. Like, come on. Just don't lie to me. This is what you want to do. That's fine. Okay? But if we don't start winning, at what point? At what point? Like, you can keep the quickly whatever you want. Have him come off the bench. As long as he's playing more minutes than Peyton, he's your lead guard in minutes-wise, total minutes at the end of the game. I'll accept it, Dibs. I'll accept your craziness. I'll accept it. But some of these other guys, at what point, if they keep putting up stinkers, do we have to question Austin Rivers? And I actually like Austin Rivers. I think he's been a bit of a spark plug. But there are times that he goes two straight games of good and then four straight games of horrifying. One of those games today no, was know, pretty it, damn that bad. Was, that was the horrifying one today. And I, I agree with you. Um, I honestly just, it's just tiring. The Knicks finally win games. They start to look confident. Yeah, we're, we're not and, the East. Yeah, we're like, not, I'm not complaining we're too not, I know. We're not. Listen, we're, we're being Nick fans because we're just, we don't like when we see some dumb things occur. But we're doing a lot better than we were last year and the year before. Right. Yeah, we're on pace for thirty minutes. Yes, that, that that's the point. Like, Vegas had us at twenty two. Yeah. We both had we, we, at twenty four. Yeah, yeah, so I, even yeah, exceeding we, we our both expectations. Said we, yeah, they're doing better than we thought too. And and like I said, I just think that there's little things that you could do that even if we do lose, I'd feel like all right. If I'm seeing things like right now, seeing quickly, seeing RJ play well, it feels that's great. Really, yeah, yeah. It feels great. The only, the only thing that bothers me is that quickly's not starting. Right. If yeah, quickly's starting, got to get over it. It's not I know, I, I'm just, it just makes no as sense. As long as he plays, we just have to, I'm, yeah, I'm, I, I'm moving to the point where as long as he plays more minutes, I can swallow That's something, but like, yeah. that's the point. It the only thing that, that, that is bothering, and you can tell, quickly really does take control of the offense, and he can score. And that Florida game, I mean, his Florida game is pretty damn good. It yeah. really reminds you of Lou Williams, who they played today. Yeah. Um, but Obi Toppin, okay, he's really been kind of drawn out because they don't really run anything with him. They barely do anything in the post where he controls the ball, and they barely run pick and roll with him. So, like, Obi, unfortunately, he's in a bad spot right now because Randall's playing too well that you can't reduce his minutes, and Obi's in that second group where quickly is kind of the – he's taking all the shots. Yeah. Right? 
and Burks. Him and Burks are going to take all the shots. So, like, where does Obi get? I mean, he takes these pick and pop threes, which he's not a he's not a three point like marksman. You want that guy driving to the hoop. You want that guy yeah, posted it, it, up. I, it's, he, he's, and in he's, a, he's in a tough, really tough spot. That, that, you kind of nail on that. He's in a tough spot. I mean, quickly came. I mean, granted, I'm happy he did, but he came out of nowhere quickly. Yeah. And a lot of people thought. I just thought, like, you know, I thought his other game, part of his game, was going to take time. I thought, like, shooting, like, this is what they drafted him, like, because he could shoot. Yeah. Right? But the floating game, I did. Like, he was no, good just, at floaters in college. But, like, not like this. Yeah. So, I mean, like you said, it just feels like because he's doing so well, he's taking the priority on the second tier, uh, second team offense. And, and unfortunately, just like you said, Toppin's just kind of stuck in that spot where he's not really getting a lot of looks. And I think that that will change over time. I just think that he started off the season and getting that injury. Yeah, it hurts. And it just hurt his momentum. So, I, it'll take time. And, like you said, it's really, for him, it's just we got to wait and see. Like yeah. that's, that's the big thing for him. I just want to end the show because there's, there's a couple rumors about Knicks who are interested in, in certain players, and I, and I saw a few things that I wanted to talk about. The first one was, you know, we weren't here last week, was the interest in Derrick Rose. And I almost threw up. Oh, God. Okay? When the Knicks were interested in Derrick Rose, a reunion, Tom Thibodeau would be okay with it. I just, it just makes, I'm yeah, going to say it, it makes no sense. No, no it doesn't. Okay? So if you get Derrick Rose, who's he competing with? Is he competing to take Alfred Payton's starting role? If he is, you practically got the same play. Okay? Who is probably a better... He's definitely a better mid-range, mid-range shooter. Yeah. Okay? But he might be a worse defender, which is saying it's, something. It is saying okay? something. Okay? So, again, doesn't make a lick of sense to me. Doesn't make a lick of sense. It really doesn't. They're getting Derrick Rose kind of a... Uh, Different copy of Peyton, but doesn't resolve your issues. No. Nope. Which is shooting and spacing. It doesn't help at all. So I, that makes no sense to me. It's just bringing in someone you're comfortable with. Okay? And remember, Derrick Rose was on the Knicks, and he went AWOL. So I want to bring someone who went AWOL on the team back to the team. No. I get it, Thibs is here, but, like, I don't, I'm not a part of that. I, I, I'm sorry. I, I don't agree either. I, I think it's pretty stupid. Like you said, you're adding a guy who's getting at the very end of his career – and he's already bailed on us once. We're going to bring him back. Yeah. Uh, another thing, J.J. Redick. We're talking about the Nets. They were also talking about the Knicks. Will it definitely help the shooting? 110% it will. What does it cost? Right? So I'm not against this either. I'm not against this uh, getting J.J. Redick. What is it going to cost? Is it going to cost you, Frank? Do the deal. Yeah. It's going to cost you a second? Do the deal. Right? If you're making a move to the playoffs. That makes sense to me. Anything more than that? No, it doesn't make sense. They're not taking Dennis Smith. He stinks. Yes. Okay, he's you going. But I'd say league. going yeah. down to the G League. Good for him yeah. for recognizing that that he needs to. But just being frank, you're not getting him for Dennis Smith Jr. It's not happening. No. Okay. It, like, if, it, if it's not if, for if, Frank, if it's Frank, do it. Yeah. Like, you don't play him. It's a win. It's a win right? for you. Frank can finally get out of your your you know Guantanamo Bay entrapment, and you can get someone you're actually wanting to to play. Yeah. So it's a win win. Um, another one, Zach Levine. This is another. This one is going to cost way more. Okay, Zach Levine playing well for the Bulls. We're going to see him tomorrow and the next game playing the Bulls. Um, this one I'm not as high on. Okay, a lot of people like he's he's been playing real well. He's becoming a very good player. But what it's going to take to get him is not Harden level. It's not up there, but closer to that. Right. So you're going to give up a couple firsts. And probably one of your young players, which is going to be Mitchell Robinson, RJ, or IQ, or Obi. Right? Are you willing to part with one of them for Levine, plus probably two firsts? I'm not on that. Not for Levine. Even though I think Levine's a good player, I don't know about that. What do you think about Zach Levine before we move to my final one? No, I, I think I kind of agree with you. I think it's just not for him. I, there's a lot of other guys. Like, if you're going to go ahead go deep into a trade, it'd be for Bradley Beal. And that's who I was going to next. Yeah. Bradley Beal. Okay? He's completely miserable in Washington. At what point does he say, I got to get the hell out of here? And I saw a lot of Knicks fans like, you know, Bradley Beal's a number two. Why, you know, why are you giving up that much? I feel like Bradley Beal is on the cusp of a number one. Okay? He's on the cusp. And I'm really hoping with not giving up a guy like RJ. Okay? The Knicks aren't going to trade Julius. So can you form that as a big three? And can you be competitive in the East? I think you can. 
I think he can. I don't know about winning these with the Nets, but I think that is a great starting platform. And what would you have to give up? You're going to have to give up two young players and multiple firsts. You probably have to give up quickly and Mitchell Robinson. Yeah. You would. To get him. And, and I know this is going to be crazy. I've, quickly has been a breath of fresh air at the point guard spot. He really has. I've been so impressed with him. But I would do it. Yeah. I absolutely would do it. it even with Mitchell Robinson. Even though Mitchell Robinson, and we didn't talk much about him, still great defensively, and he's finally not fouling Mars. Now, what I'd love for him to... Just can we see a little something out of his offensive game plan? Like a little bit of progress offensively of doing anything other than being a guy who grabs rebounds and dunks? Like, can we just see anything? Dude, the, I mean, take a jump shot, but I know, I'm not going to complain. But, let's, but if that is Bradley what's going to be 30, 30, almost 35 points per game, right? Averaging, and I granted he's on a horrifying team, horrifying. So he's like the only guy, right? Yes, and maybe that might elevate his points because he's the only one that can, that can make shots, but just think of that. If you get Randall, keep Randall here, and somehow find a way to keep Which R.J. Barrett. Which you have an option on Randall next yeah. year. And you Team find option. a way to keep R.J. Barrett out of this trade, and you bring Bradley Beal in. You actually have a three. Now, it's not saying they're like this is a big three like like Miami style, but like this is a, you have your best player, which is Bradley Beal. Then Julius Randall is definitely playing a number two level. And you're and telling R.J. Me R.J. RJ is growing to be a three. Even Come growing on. to be a two if he continues playing well. That's a great. I think that's, that's a, a great, great start. Unit. And great now unit. you would have to work on your bench, but you grab one of the hardest things to do, which is grab that player. Yes, and grab you're looking competent. So it's something that that you first of all you bring Bradley Beal in. Remember that. Remember he had that conversation this this uh, before the season started. We have to look competent. Yeah, like, we would look really competent. That's what I'm saying. We look and competent before Bradley. You probably give up one of your one of your first rounds this year and the next two years. Remember, we have Dallas's pick this year. Okay, and then I believe it's not next year because you're not allowed to get multiple years in a row. But we have Dallas picked in two years later, right? So, yeah, we'll we'll have one first round pick this year. We won't have a first round next year, and then we'll probably give up one, and we'll still have another first round if we give up three first and two young players, which is what like, I'm just assuming, like the James Harden deal. Yeah. Okay. If that's what it takes, we'll still have first in two of the next three years, and a first in this year's draft if we give up. Let's just say we give up the Knicks first. If Dallas doesn't make the playoffs, we'll have a lottery pick. So that's why I don't understand people's hatred for Bradley Beal. I think Bradley Beal is a good yeah, he's, basketball player. He is, he's a good basketball player. Really good. I think he's better than Levine. And so, to me, if that's a real option, I know it's not It's not. What we, it's not the Durant. No. It's not. We missed out, and it hurts. But I think this will... This will be a, a, a step in the right direction. And Thibs is not a developing guy. I mean, we like begging. Obi's not playing quickly. No offense. Quickly just to get 20 minutes. Scoring like a madman. Okay? Just to get 20 minutes. Okay? He doesn't like playing young guys. He's a vet guy. Yeah, no. So we're going to have multiple first-round picks in this loaded draft class, which I like. Yeah. It, and you know how hard it is going to get those guys to play? Yeah. So, like, that's the it, point. It, is that this, if we're going to... This gonna, be exactly what Thibs would, would want. Yes. Right? He wants to get a bunch of veteran players. He wants to make the playoffs. He makes a bunch of veteran okay. players, and he'll make the play. He will make the playoffs with Bradley Beal, right? If you have that unit, Bradley Three Beal. first and the two young guys, I think that it'll definitely... And it'll hurt. I know their Nick fans are going to look at us, Morris, and say, you're giving up quickly. Like, the typical – like, no, this is not typical. This is not typical. That's how highly I think of Bradley Beal. I don't think of him as a top five superstar. But he is in that echelon yeah, of top 15 about player. To, I feel like he's about to become that He's an echelon guy. type guy, and he can shoot from the outside. He can drive. You know, he's not – you know, when John Wall got hurt, he was the playmaker for Washington. And Washington's – they're practically on that complete rebuild moment. So this makes sense for both teams. It makes sense for both teams. And if the Knicks got to get multiple teams involved to do it, to do what the Nets did, then let's do it, baby. Let's do it. Let's do it. Listen, we were we were part of the rebuild forever. Yes. And this upcoming draft class, we are definitely on it. Imagine if the Knicks keep their picks. Both miss the playoffs. We had two lottery selections. Or the best case scenario, the Knicks make the playoffs. Mavs don't. We still get a lottery pick, and we made the playoffs. That's all good. Yeah. I'm just saying that option with Bradley Beal, definitely consider that, it. And the Knicks, I think, assets would garner enough for what like, like But again, if you have if Dallas Knicks, is the lottery pick and the Knicks were Knicks, a lottery Knicks fans pick. make me laugh. It's like, okay, well, you know what? This is what we'll do. Well, for, for Bradley Beal, 
will give up Frank, Kevin Knox, and Obi Toppin. They're not going to take that. Who, do you understand? Who, who, uh, like, what, you don't play Frank. Frank. Yeah, I'm saying, say like, I would take, I'm seeing these Nick fans throwing those like, out. Yeah. No, like, no, we'll no, give them one of the Dallas picks. This isn't, we'll give this them. isn't 2K general manager yes. mode where they just, you start loading up on players and they say, yeah, you know what? That's a lot of players. I'll take it. Like, no. They have to have talented players. They want do, talented do they players be back. Instantly. And players that they've seen success. Like, I believe in Frank. I if, don't think he's a like, – If, I don't think if he's, those guys are starting and they were consistently being yes. good, then I say, yeah, that's a good uh, – But Frank hasn't played yes. in, like, months. Knox can't play defense. And Obi Toppin and he's not been, shooting, he's been he hurt nothing. for literally a month. And Obi Toppin looks really raw. Yeah. So, like, no. No team is taking that. They want the – Good. They want a good young player, so that's why quickly playing well. He's going to be asked. Yes. If they make that trade, Mitchell Robinson, they're going to want him. They're going to want two of those three between IQ, Mitchell Robinson, and RJ. RJ is the one guy I will not touch, and the reason is I listen. I know it's a point guard driven league, and quickly's been really good. Quickly is a little small. I really like quickly. I really do. RJ is thick. Yeah, and he, he's he's getting he big. Now, granted, granted, quickly could get bigger. I just think that right now, but he ain't growing. I know. Growing. Like right now is that RJ is getting bigger. Like he's getting bigger, and he's becoming more of a force. He's doing more. Yes. And and he's just he, you are, you. I mean, I just think keep your be, mind open, Knicks fan. Yeah, that's, just that's keep your mind open. We're both on the same squad. I think this will make a lot of sense. This is not the Allen Hahn. Like I want no, Russell, I Russell Westbrook to be relevant again. That's not what this is. Okay, this is a real opportunity if at one point, and I think it's going to come at some point, Bradley Beal says, I want to get the hell out of you. Yeah, I think okay? it's coming sooner than later. And I think it's going to happen. All right, everyone, that was our show. I want to appreciate everyone for tuning in. Um, I hope you guys have a great start to your week because it's Sunday right now. Yeah. So I hope you guys have a great start to your week. Uh, we'll let you know if the, the show happens next week. Again, the construction thing kind of screwing up the schedule. But if we don't see you next week, again, have a great Super Bowl. You know, eat a lot. Yeah, make sure you get those wings. Safe. Make sure you get, uh, get a nice you know, couple all the, of drinks. All the nachos ready and everything. Have a sports-filled weekend, weekend, and we'll see you all soon.